I'm John McGuay with 8541 Tactical, and this is Mail Call Mondays, the show that answers your questions about precision rifles, optics, and equipment. Uh, welcome to another Mail Call Mondays, and on this Mail Call Mondays, we are going to talk about cleaning optics. Uh, we've got a lot of questions in the past. We did a really extensive video on both cleaning bolt-action precision rifles and semi-automatic precision rifles, but we really didn't cover a lot on rifle scopes. Um, part of that reason is because my belief in cleaning optics is less is more. Uh, coming from the Marine Corps, uh, where cleaning is a way to just use up uh, open time in the schedule, I, I really have a dislike of unneeded weapons cleaning. And especially coming from... Uh, a billet where we had some very, very old and used sniper rifles. Um, most of the optics that we had access to actually had most of the, the coatings on the lenses cleaned off of them. Uh, so it was really, really a big no-no to touch your lenses anytime you did not absolutely need to do so. And we didn't have top-notch uh, cleaning tools. It was usually limited to toilet paper and uh, paint brushes that you sourced yourself. Uh, so really, it, it really was not a good thing uh, to do anything as far as cleaning your lenses. But uh, there are times when it's a necessity. So let's talk about what we as civilian shooters can do uh, when we have these high dollar optics on here. Uh, now this is a custom Remington 700 sitting in front of me in a Macmillan uh, A35 stock. And it is running a US Optics SN3. I've had this scope for a very, very long time, and I can probably count on both hands the number of times that I've actually cleaned the lenses in it. Um, part of that is because I always keep lens caps on it uh, when I'm not actually shooting, especially when I'm out on a dusty range where the wind's blowing. Um, you know, you're done firing, and as soon as you're done shooting, I'll reach up, snap my objective closed, snap my ocular closed and then this is sealed up we don't have to worry about a good gust coming down range picking up dust blowing it into the lenses um, when you rack your rifle uh, we usually rack rifles with the muzzle up uh, you don't have to worry about the sun shining down through your lenses and possibly having a magnifying glass effect on the opposite end and uh, burning something we don't really have to worry about burning the reticle anymore uh, all these reticles now are glass etched reticles. Uh, they don't actually have metal wires anymore. Uh, the old school metal wire reticles that actually had mill dots soldered onto them, uh, if you let the sun shine through the lens for too long, you could actually melt your mill dots off, or so the story goes. I've never actually seen it happen, uh, but you know, just those thin little metal wires, I don't know that it would take a whole lot of heat to cause some damage to them. Uh, so keep your scopes caps closed anytime you're not actually looking through the scope. Uh, it really doesn't take but a second to flip those up. Uh, I'll keep them closed when I'm staged in the box and I'll flip them up uh, right before I say, or right before I indicate that I'm ready to start the stage. Um, I like flip up scope caps, but they don't work for everything. Uh, this scope, because we have an adjustable objective on here, um, it's not super close to the barrel up here, but if you get a little bit lower ring set, uh, you can run into problems with the hinge of the caps hitting the barrel in some uh, settings. So you need to bear that in mind, and bikini type caps may be necessary uh, if you're running a really low profile setup or something even low enough that you can't get the caps on and not contact the barrel. But if that's the case, uh, bikini scope caps are really cheap, just the, the rubber ones that stretch over the top. Uh, Night Force makes some really nice ones and I've used those in the past. Uh, some guys will actually string them to the scope. They'll take some 550 cord and wrap it around or take a zip tie and run it around. So if the cap, uh, the bikini caps are always actually attached to the rifle. It makes it a little harder to drop them have them blow away, fall out of your pocket, etc. So enough on scope caps. Uh, tons of them out there. Make sure your scope is equipped with some and keep them closed. Now when you go to put this rifle up, if it has been a rainy, nasty range trip and the optic is actually wet, 
uh, you do not want to store it with the caps closed. Make sure the caps are open when you store it, and that way you can give the lenses time to dry out. Uh, the coatings on the lenses might, depending upon your scope, be able to absorb a little bit of water. Uh, if there are steel retaining rings in there holding your lenses in, uh, then those steel retaining rings might have a tendency to rust if you trap moisture in and keep these caps closed. So leave them open, let the rifle get some air, and uh, let those lenses dry out before you put it away. Now, if you're just on a regular, average, dusty range trip, uh, then when you get back, you're gonna wanna knock the dust off the rifle. Um, these are great for that. This is just a really cheap uh, paintbrush. I just picked this up right before the show from uh, Home Depot, about 96 cents, I think it was. Uh, so it's good to keep a couple of these around. I usually buy a couple at a time. Uh, you wanna make sure you have one for just general dusting on the rifle, just to knock that dust off the action and that, and make sure that that is well marked and that that is never, ever, ever used on the lenses of your scope. Uh, you can use it on the outside of the action. It's great for getting into the nooks and crannies on your turrets, uh, just getting in here anywhere that dust has a tendency to cake up on the outside of the optic. Uh, one thing on scopes like, especially the uh, US Optics scopes, it seems, uh, they use a good amount of grease uh, on various different spots on the scope, like the magnification selector ring. And when the optic gets hot, some of that grease will bleed out a little bit through the seams. Uh, so you make sure that whichever brush you're using for the outside, uh, you keep that separate. Because if you go and you brush this stuff off through here, and you're getting grease and grit embedded in the brush, and then you take that brush and you go inside your lenses, uh, you're gonna be a really bad situation. You're gonna put greasy grit all over your lenses, and really that is the worst possible condition that you're gonna have to clean away. So do not use the same brush for the outside of the scope and the outside of the rifle as you use for the lenses. Now, my preference for actually first level cleaning, just general cleaning of the lenses themselves uh, is one of these little guys here. This is a lens pen. Uh, you can get these at just about any camera supply stores. Uh, this one actually came from Gander Mountain. It's actually Gander Mountain branded. Uh, just they run the gamut of prices. Usually the, the store brands, you can get them pretty cheap. Uh, if it says, you know, Leupold or Night Force or one of the big scope manufacturers on there, it's probably going to be a little bit more expensive. So uh, find the cheapest one you can. But the key thing on here is you want a brush, and this is a really nice fine bristle brush um, that extends and contracts or that has some kind of cap to put over to protect it because uh, we don't want it getting nasty. If you're going to store this in your butt pack, your backpack, your field gear, uh, make sure it's either in its own pocket or you throw it in a Ziploc bag or something so you don't get grit that builds up on there. Um, I'll usually also just kind of flip it a couple of times before I use it to knock anything off that attached itself from the last one. And it's real simple. You just get in here and with really, really light strokes, you just knock out anything that's hanging out in there. And that will do 90% of your lens cleaning duties. Uh, just That's going to pick up the grit that has just blown up and stuck on your lens by static electricity. Uh, and it'll take care of things. Resist the urge to blow on your lenses with your mouth uh, because you will generally get a little bit of spittle in there. Uh, and you can get that on your lenses. Now you're going to get water spots. You can get dirt sticking to the water spots. Uh, also, your breath has moisture, and we don't really want moisture on our lenses. So uh, resist the urge to blow on it. If you really have to, you can get one of those little lens blowers uh, that you can get at camera stores. Um, there really isn't any difference between rifle scope lenses and camera lenses. They're both multi-coated optics, so... Things that work for cleaning camera lenses will work really well uh, for cleaning scopes. Be careful about the stuff that's out there. It's meant for cleaning eyeglasses um, because there are a varying range of products that can go from good to really, really bad. Uh, so stick to camera lenses and stuff that's uh, made specifically for scopes because that is usually where the high dollar stuff is. Now, the 
Other reason that I recommend the lens pens is because on the opposite side, you have this nifty little uh, microfiber cloth that has a cleaning compound embedded in it. And there is kind of a, I won't say a reservoir, but there's uh, a thing that holds more cleaning compound in the cap here. And so you can put this guy on, uh, get a little bit of cleaning compound on it. And if you have water spots or something that, you know, didn't come off with the brush. Uh, once you make sure you've knocked all the grit out, uh, you can take the microfiber pad and you can try to work that little spot off. Be very, very careful. Whenever I use this, I use as little pressure as I can possibly get away with and get the job done. Uh, too much pressure is just pushing whatever that debris is into your lens and you can scratch the hell out of it or start to rub the coatings off the lens. So be very, very gentle if you're using that. Um, sometimes if I'm in a hurry, then yeah, if I have to remove one of those spots, I'll give a little bit of breath just to get a little bit of moisture on the lens and then uh, hit it with that. Uh, but this is generally a dry process. Try to use it dry first uh, and see if that works. If that doesn't, okay, uh, you'll have to go on to more extreme measures. But again, a little bit of spotting is not going to make a huge difference. So don't get anal with these lenses. If you've got just a little bit of water spots or a little bit of dust blown on them, you're still going to be able to see through the scope just fine. So it may be in your best interest out in the field to just leave it be until you can get back to the shop and give it a real thorough cleaning. Uh, really, really resist the urge to take your t-shirt and go up there and wipe it with your t-shirt. Uh, that your t-shirt's been picking up grit, sweat, salts, all kinds of stuff, and you're just going to dig that into your scope. And we're not necessarily worried about the glass as we are about the coatings on the outside. Uh, scope manufacturers take great pains to develop these coatings to help limit the amount of moisture buildup you have on the outside of your lenses, help limit reflectivity, uh, all these other things. So don't rub off your state-of-the-art coatings because you were lazy. Uh, if you need to, just let it be and go on. When we're talking about uh, moist conditions, we talk about rain coming in. Uh, rain can sit on your lenses. It's not going to hurt your lenses. Uh, you don't need to dry your lenses off just constantly. Uh, if you get enough drops on the objective lens, then it can really it can start to obscure your sight picture. It can make it difficult to look through. Uh, in those cases, what I'll do is make sure that I have plenty of time before I have to get on the scope and get on a stage and I will blow into the objective to blow as many of those water drops off as possible. Now, as soon as you do that, the lens will fog completely. Uh, you won't be able to see anything through that lens. So you have to allow it some time for the fog to dissipate and then you'll be good to go. Uh, same thing with your ocular. If you blow on the ocular lens, no, you're not going to be able to shoot anything for a little while until that fog dissipates. Um, but if it's just really pouring, uh, it can get some of that off. Uh, rain is another spot where a sunshade is maybe a good option. The sunshade will keep that rain off of the objective lens and give you a little bit more room, even if you've got a really hard wind blowing that rain around. Not a lot you can do on the ocular side other than wear a hat or throw a veil over top of it or something of that nature. Um, so that's about it as far as field cleaning. We really don't want to get into any more detail out in the field. Uh, various different companies make different lens cleaning solutions, lens cleaning kits. Again, if it's designed for high-end camera lenses or high-end rifle scopes, you're probably going to be okay. If it's cheap stuff designed for sunglasses, I would shy away from it. Uh, microfiber cloths like you get in sunglasses bags, that I would really, really be careful using that stuff because, again, we're worried about grinding grit into the actual lenses of the scope. Now, when we get back to the shop, uh, there are a couple of other things that we can do. If you really have gotten this thing gobbed up, if it was muddy, if it was nasty, if you've got water spots all over the lenses, um, then it may be time to bump it up to a little bit higher level of cleaning. Uh, in that case, again, first thing you're going to do is knock all the grit off with your lens pen. Uh, get as much of that dust, as much of the gritty stuff out as possible. Uh, once you've got that out, take a look and see what the stuff you have on your lenses is. 
if it is just water spots, then you can probably go grab you some distilled water and take a cotton ball and just use a cotton ball and distill water and you can get most of those spots off. Uh, if that's not doing it, alcohol may be a little bit better option. But if you have gun cleaning oil, if you have some really bad fingerprints, stuff like that on your lenses, uh, water may not get it, alcohol may not get it. Uh, there, it's time to step up to a little bit higher level solvent, and that's why we have the acetone here. So if you want to get absolutely everything off those lenses, the first thing you're going to do uh, is take some cotton swabs. And you're going to get a little bit of acetone on the cotton swab, and you're going to go around the outside edge of the lens, where the lens meets the metal housing. And you're going to clean out that little nook and cranny first, and make sure you get all the dirt, all the crap that's embedded in there. Uh, we are not using any pressure, really, really light passes, because we're trying to pick the stuff up. Uh, we're not trying to push it in, so kind of roll the Q-tip as you go along to pick that dirt and dust up. Uh, may take a couple of passes until you get that clean. Once we have that outside groove where all that nastiness likes to hide, uh, then we can go back and we can take a cotton ball, uh, get a little bit of acetone on the cotton ball, and then again, just circular motion, we can go around and we can get those water spots, those oil spots, anything else off the middle. Again, we're trying to pick the stuff up and get it off. Uh, we're not trying to grind it in. So real gentle, just go around, and that is going to solve 90% of your problems on there. Uh, if you have something else on there, it's really going to depend upon what you have stuck on there. God forbid you get some glue or some paint. Uh, even paint, acetone, should take it off. So if you're painting your stock and you get some overspray somehow that makes it past your masking and your caps and all your other defenses and gets on there, then acetone should take that off, especially if you get on it quick. Um, but that is really about it. That's the highest level that you're going to go to as far as cleaning these lenses. If acetone doesn't get it, it's probably going to be time to call your scope manufacturer and say, hey, uh, this is what I've got. What can I do here? Now, the whole acetone deal, uh, that may be something I do once a year at the most, unless there was just really a specific field situation that got those lenses nasty. Uh, most of the water spots and stuff you're going to run into uh, lens pen will knock them out and you'll be good to go. So that about covers it for cleaning your scopes. Now, of course, there's always the disclaimer, check with your scope manufacturer first. Nothing I've said here is supposed to trump what your scope manufacturer says. If you decide to go use acetone, you need to make sure that it's compatible uh, with your optic. I can't cover every uh, possible scenario out there. So if you get a scope manufacturer that put a certain type of coating on that can be dissolved by acetone, uh, we got some issues. But acetone will work for the majority of the high-end scopes out there. But again, check with your specific scope manufacturer before you do it. I'm not responsible for anything that you damage on your rifle scope. Well, that's about it. If you guys have any questions or comments on rifle scope cleaning or anything else in general, please send us a comment in the comment section below or send it to us on Facebook or Twitter. If you've liked this episode, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, get out and shoot!